Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk and today I'm going to tell you about my homemade vacuum forming machine. So what is vacuum forming? What is vacuum forming? Well I'm going to tell you. Vacuum forming is a process by which a sheet of plastic is heated, it's sucked down with a vacuum over a wooden buck or a wooden positive mould to make a shell from the piece. I've got some pieces here that are vacuum formed, which are C3PO's feet which I made. You can see they're hollow shells made of sheet plastic which have just been painted up gold. If you want to have a look at my website you can see the rest of the C3PO project. I also use this process for making some pieces for R2D2. The mould for these looks exactly the same but it's made out of wood. I've got another piece of C3PO here which is C3PO's bottom. And I've also got a sheet of plastic. This is a sheet of 2mm thick hips, which is high impact polystyrene sheet. Basically we heat this up in a heater, so it's all soft, and then we stick it over the mould, and basically suck air through the bottom, which sucks it down, and it forms over the shape to make a rigid shell. So the first thing we need is some means of sucking the air out beneath the mould. I've got this table here, which is full of holes, as you can see, which I drilled all of them by hand, there's 200 of them. This table is made in three layers. You might be to just see that there's three layers of uh, MDF put together there. The very top layer has all the holes in. The bottom one is basically like a picture frame, so there's a cavity in the middle. And the bottom layer is just a solid piece of wood. It's got one hole in to attach to a vacuum cleaner. I'm just using a Dyson here. Basically, obviously, when you turn the vacuum cleaner on, it sucks air out and that sucks air down for all the holes. The mould would go just on there like that. There's also a rubber seal around the top here. And also we need some means of holding the plastic. So the next piece is this frame, which is like a picture frame. It's in two layers. That's got some rubber strip on in the middle as well. And that would hold the plastic so that we can put it down and it's all held into place. That's just got some bolts down there around the edge which will allow us to separate it so we can clamp it together and hold the plastic. So I'm just going to take that to pieces and put a piece of plastic in there. That's the last one. So we'll just take one layer off here and then we'll just put in the plastic so that just fits right in there. It's got a nice piece of cellophane on it, we'll just peel it off glossy side up and we'll just put this back on and bolt it in. You could probably come up with some sort of uh, quick release method because it's quite a lot of hassle on doing the nuts and bolts. For now it holds it quite securely and it works quite well so I'll just put those little washers and bolts back on. That's the last one. So now what we've got is the frame with the plastic suspended in the middle. So if you can imagine putting that down over the mould and that holds it all nice and square. So obviously there's one thing missing which is heating the plastic. This is where a lot of people who build vacuum formers run into trouble. You could use an oven to heat plastic, but this is basically too big for the oven in my kitchen and I don't really want to put it in the same oven that I'm cooking food in because some sort of fumes come off the plastic. I've also seen people take apart electric fires, take the wire out, make a kind of wooden um, box, put some ceramic terminal posts all, all around the inside, and then use the wire from an electric fire to wind it all round, and then wire it to the mains to make an electric heater. This seems quite dangerous to me, so basically I've come up with a much safer and better method. The main problem is heating the plastic for long enough, hot enough, and evenly enough. If you try and use a hot air gun or something like that, you can only heat tiny spots. So ideally you need to heat the whole surface all at once until it's all uniform heat. So here's the heating solution I came up with. Basically this is a wooden box. In the bottom of the box, if I just take this off, you can see that what I've actually got in here is basically a 2 kilowatt quartz patio heater. Now this is the type of heater that you put up in your workshop or outside. It actually came with this handy bracket so that you can bolt it up on the wall or wherever you want to put it. The quartz patio heaters, basically they um, work in a way where they don't heat the air in between the heater and the objects on the person they're heating. 
So the spec says that basically the object the heat shines on gets heated up and nothing does in between. So if we just put the box back on, what we've actually got is a box that's completely covered with foil on the inside. Just going to lean this up a bit. It's a tapered box which fits the heater at the bottom and it's square at the top to match the piece of plastic. As I say, the inside is lined with foil and that helps diffuse the heat all around so the heat shines onto it and it reflects all the way around from the heater. And by the time the heat's got to the top, it's uniformly warm. So let's just put that heater back in square. I'm just going to turn it on. It takes about 30 seconds to heat up, but you should see a nice red glow inside here. You should see uh, even heat all over the surface. So um, obviously we have to heat the plastic up, so there's some safety things here we should consider. Obviously this is a 2 kilowatt heater in the bottom of an MDF box. The foil does stop the wood burning, and basically it doesn't get hot at all. But obviously if you're going to do this, never leave the heater unattended or anything like that. And there we go, so the, the heat is up to temperature now. It's extremely hot here, wherever I put my hands, it feels fairly uniform. And obviously what we're going to do is just put plastic on the top here in its frame. And we've got a stopwatch. And basically we're just going to start that and we're going to time three minutes, which seems to be about right. And I found that black plastic heats up um, a bit quicker than white plastic because it absorbs the heat and it's less reflective. This is a 2mm plastic. So obviously if the plastic is thicker then it may take longer. If you try another plastic like ABS or acrylic then you may find... The, the heating time varies, so you have to experiment to see what happens. So we're just going to leave that heating for a while, and then I'm going to show you a vacuum form of C3PO's bottom. So this is uh, 1 minute and 10 seconds in. You can see the plastic is starting to turn quite flexible. I can push it and it flexes. It is quite hot. I can also smell the styrene fumes, so you probably best do this in a well-ventilated place. Okay, that's pretty much melted all over. We'll just give it to 1.30 now, so we'll give it another minute and a half, and we should be ready to go. So we're up to about 2 minutes 30 there. If we have a look at the plastic, we can see that it's all quite uniformly heated. There's a sag in the middle. That's why it's quite important we don't leave this unattended, because obviously the plastic will eventually melt and fall into the fire, and everything will catch fire, and that won't be very good. So let's just have a look at the stopwatch. Just over 3 minutes, so the next thing I'm going to do is turn on the vacuum and turn off the heater. Lift this piece up, put it down on the mould, and we should hopefully see a uh, successful vacuum form of C3PO's bottom. Right. So we just held the vacuum on there for a few more seconds. Now we can see the plastics all formed down over the piece and that's made a successful vacuum form pull. So now we've removed the plastic from the frame and taken out the wooden mould as you can see. So this is basically now a hollow piece of plastic which we can trim and cut down and paint and make the rest of the project. If you'd like to see the rest of C3PO being made you can have a look at it on my website which is xrobots.co.uk. See you next time. Bye!